The headlines have been dominated recently by pictures of burning oil tankers in the Persian Gulf. The U.S. Central Command has released video footage purporting to show Iranian frogmen involved in a mining operation. Most recently, Iran has shot down a U.S. Navy MQ-4C Triton UAV over the Persian Gulf. One thing that has gone underreported in the mainstream media is the wider context surrounding Iranian and U.S. operations in the Persian Gulf. Iran has always cared about foreign powers operating in the Gulf and the ability of an opponent, like the United States, to cut off their ability to export oil. This is because of the experiences of this man, Mohammad Mossadegh. Mossadegh served as Prime Minister of Iran in the early 1950s. He is a hero, to this day, of the Iranian nationalist movement. This is because he nationalized the Iranian oil industry in an effort to direct more oil revenues into the coffers of the Iranian government rather than those of British Petroleum. His actions led to the so-called Abadan Crisis, named after Iran's first and largest oil refinery. In response to Mossadegh's actions, the British government imposed a naval blockade on Iran. They even went so far as to intercept tankers thought to contain Iranian oil. The blockade was successful, and the Iranian economy suffered immense damage. In 1953, Mossadegh's government was overthrown in Operation Ajax. A government led by the Shah of Iran, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, took his place. The Shah learned from Mossadegh's experience. In 1968, he was quoted as saying, The Persian Gulf is vital to Iran, and is a matter of life and death to us. The Shah did more than just talk. In 1971, he seized the Shat al-Arab waterway from Iraq, restricting the threat the Iraqi navy could pose to Iranian shipping. The Shah didn't stop there. Following the British withdrawal east of the Suez, to use the turn of phrase popularized by Kipling, the Shah seized three islands from the UAE, Abu Musa and the Greater and Lesser Tombs. These islands represented strategically important bases in the Gulf. During the period, the Shah also involved himself in the Dofar insurgency in Oman. Here, he aimed to prevent the People's Front for the liberation of the occupied Arabian Gulf from threatening his ability to export oil through the Gulf of Oman. During the period, the Shah also embarked on an aggressive weapons procurement program. Among other things, he purchased the F-14 Tomcat armed with the M-54 Phoenix long-range missile, P-3 maritime patrol aircraft, and Harpoon anti-ship cruise missiles. The Shah also purchased, but did not receive, four highly advanced K-class destroyers. All of these weapon systems were purchased in part to ensure what had happened to Mossadegh did not happen to the Shah. However, the Shah's government fell from power in 1979 due to internal unrest. In its place was a government led by the Ayatollah Khomeini, who took on the title of Supreme Leader. The new Islamic Republic of Iran soon found itself at war with its neighbor, Iraq. The Iran-Iraq War raged from 1980 to 1988. It claimed hundreds of thousands of lives and served as a vehicle for unity for a generation of Iranians, including the current leadership. During the war, several incidents occurred in the Persian Gulf that highlight the dangers for foreign forces operating in the region and Iranian hostility to what they saw as foreign interference. The first incident occurred on May 17, 1987. The USS Stark, an Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate, was hit by two Exocet missiles launched by an Iraqi F-1 Mirage. 37 U.S. sailors were killed. While not an attack by Iran, the USS Stark incident highlights the effectiveness of surprise missile attacks in the Gulf. Less than two months later, the United States began Operation Ernest Will. This operation was launched to protect Kuwaiti tankers, some of them carrying Iraqi oil, from Iranian attacks aimed at disrupting Iraq's economy. On the first day of the operation, the tanker MV bridged and hit an Iranian mine. According to a later report, the mine was laid within visual range of escorting U.S. vessels. During the period, the United States also launched Operation Prime Chance. Largely conducted with Special Forces personnel, the operation was intended to disrupt Iranian mine laying activities. During the operation, U.S. forces captured the non-conventional mine laying vessel Iran Ajar. Circled in red are naval mines similar to those used in the mining of the MV Bridgeton. A few months later, on the 15th of October, 1987, the U.S. flag tanker CL City was struck by an Iranian-launched anti-ship missile. In response to the Iranian attack on the CL City, the United States launched Operation Nimble Archer, resulting in the destruction of two Iranian oil platforms used as bases for attacks in the Gulf. The next year, on the 14th of April, 1988, the USS Samuel B. Roberts, an Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate, hit an Iranian mine. In retaliation for the attack on the USS Samuel B. Roberts, the United States launched Operation Praying Mantis. Hoping to repeat the successes of Operation Nimble Archer, the United States began targeting Iranian oil platforms used as bases for attacks. The Iranian frigate Sahand sortie to confront American forces. It was sunk by Mark 82 laser-guided bombs dropped by A-6 intruder aircraft. Several other Iranian vessels were also sunk, 
at the cost of an American helicopter in an apparent accident. The last incident occurred on July 3, 1988. The USS Vincennes, a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, and nearby U.S. vessels were approached by Iranian gunboats in the Persian Gulf. A U.S. Navy helicopter then began to receive small arms fire, and numerous explosions were heard near the convoy the vessels were protecting. The USS Vincennes then began to engage the Iranian gunboats. Simultaneously, the ship was tracking an aircraft inbound. The USS Vincennes requested and received permission to open fire. Two SM-2 standard missiles were launched. Both missiles hit Iran Air Flight 655 and Airbus A300B2. 290 civilians were killed. In the official inquiry into the incident, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff concluded that given the pressure-filled environment, the outcome was a reasonable performance under the circumstances. This incident is particularly troubling given the large amount of civilian air and sea traffic in the Gulf, as seen in this map by FlightRadar24.com. While technology like transponders has definitely improved and the U.S. Navy has learned from the incident, the potential for an incident like this to repeat itself today is scary. Following the Iranian shootdown of an American drone over the Persian Gulf, several airlines, including United and Lufthansa, have announced they will no longer fly over certain Iranian airspace in the Persian Gulf. All of these incidents highlight the different challenges facing U.S. forces operating in the Persian Gulf. The USS Stark incident, although caused by an Iraqi fighter, highlights the danger of a surprise missile attack. The mining of the MV Bridgeton and the USS Selmo B. Roberts highlight the vulnerability of U.S. forces to mining operations. USS Vincennes shootdown of Iran Air Flight 655 highlights the danger of innocent life being lost in complicated combat situations. Fourteen years later, the United States conducted the Millennium Challenge 2002 exercise, a multi-week, $250 million exercise that pitted U.S. forces, the so-called Blue Team, against the Red Team, Iran. Red forces were commanded by U.S. Marine Corps General Van Ripper. He used unconventional fast patrol boats armed with anti-ship missiles and swarm tactics to launch a surprise attack against the American fleet. He also used low-level electronic deception, turning off radars and radios to deny the U.S. one of the most important things on the battlefield, information. His surprise attack was successful. Sixteen U.S. naval vessels were sunk, including an aircraft carrier, and thousands of sailors were killed. The United States, upset with Van Ripper's success, redid the exercise in a more scripted manner that assured an American victory. Iranian capabilities have only improved since then. This is because the current Iranian leadership, like the Shah before them, know Iran's survival and future depend on their ability to resist foreign domination of the Gulf and export Iranian oil. To this end, they have purchased Kilo-class attack submarines, the vaunted S-300 anti-aircraft missile system, and anti-ship cruise missiles. To conclude, if you take anything away from this video, it should be two points. Firstly, the Iranian leadership, due to the experiences of Mohammad Mossadegh, has always cared about foreign domination of the Persian Gulf and their ability to export oil. Secondly, as highlighted by the experiences of U.S. forces in the region during the late 1980s and the Millennium Challenge 2002 exercise, the Persian Gulf is a complicated domain to fight in, and U.S. victory is by no means assured. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my first attempt at making a video.